Hello guys and welcome to another lesson in public relations with Michael Asantequini. Today we are going to look at one interesting topic in PL that has to do with understanding publics. So in this lesson we are going to look at who publics are and why it is important that organizations understand their publics. So who are publics? A public can be defined as any group whose members have a common interest or common value in a particular situation. Publics can be categorized into many different ways. They could be traditional, they could be non-traditional, they could be latent, they could be aware, active, intervening, primary, secondary, internal, external, domestic, and international. So in the next slides, we are going to look at each and every one of these publics and what they stand for. So let's begin with the difference between traditional and non-traditional publics. Traditional publics refer to groups that an organization has long-standing relationships with. On the other hand, non-traditional publics refer to groups that are unknown to an organization but later become known to them. For example, we can say that Americans are the traditional publics to brands like McDonald's, Apple and Facebook because these brands were originally made for them. Difference between latent and aware publics. Latent publics refer to a group that shares values with an organization, but the members are not yet aware of the situation, and so they do not have an active relationship with this organization. Aware publics, on the other hand, refer to a group that realizes its shared values with an organization and also has no organized actions in response to this. So the basic difference between latent publics and aware publics is that with aware, they are conscious of their relationship with the organization. Now let's look at another group of publics that we can talk about. This has to do with the active and the intervening public. Active publics refer to a group that realizes their shared values with an organization and are prepared to act on this. So the basic difference between active publics and aware publics is that for active publics, they are both conscious and are acting on their shared relationship with the organization. Intervening public, on the other hand, is any individual or groups of people who can help communicate information to others about an organization. And usually, this is made up of the media. Another group of publics we can talk about is the primary and the secondary publics. Primary publics refers to a group that has direct influence on an organization's ability to achieve its goals. Secondary publics, on the other hand, are a group that have important relationships with an organization, but whose influence over the organization's ability to achieve its goals are minimal. And so, for example, investors, financiers, employees form part of an organization's primary publics, whereas activist groups such as community members and activists, regulators, amongst others, form part of an organization's secondary publics. least we can also talk about the internal and the external publics. Internal publics are groups of people who can be found usually working with organization or within the organization. Internal publics can include people like employees, distributors, suppliers, customers and shareholders. External publics on the other hand are groups of people working outside of an organization and these include people like media, governments, prospective shareholders, financial supporters and community members. Finally, we are going to talk about the last group of publics for our lesson today. And this has to do with the domestic and international publics. So who are domestic publics? Domestic publics are people located within the same country as your organization and who have an interest in your organization. International publics, on the other hand, are groups of people who can be found outside the country which your organization can be found, but who, has an, who have an interest in your organization. And so why is it important that organizations understand their publics? Well, let's look at three reasons. First, understanding publics helps organizations to know who to direct their communication efforts to at every point in time. Second, it helps organizations to maintain good relations with publics whose actions or inactions can have a big 
or direct influence on the assessors. And finally, it helps organizations to avoid communicating ideas that may damage their relationship with current or potential public. And so this brings us to the end of today's lesson in understanding publics and public relations. Thank you for staying tuned and hope to see you in our next lesson.